Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to land instant recruitments in CFB 25 Dynasty mode. Before we get into the video, make sure to sub if you're new, give this video a big thumbs up and comment if you have any questions. If you haven't already, check out Underdog. My link down below will give you up to $250 on your first deposit. So let's get into this. First and foremost, guys, instant recruits is something that a lot of people haven't really understood and i've kind of confused by it even caught people off guard when recruiting now before i do get into the video i do want to preface this by saying there is an ability package to improve instant recruitment chances it's under coach and it's in the cfb coach abilities over here and if you go up to the ceo which not everyone has so to get ceo you gotta win two national championships some coaches such as the georgia coach do have the ceo unlocked and they do have the dream school based on kirby smart right that's why they have ceo this is the package i'm referring to but outside of this you still can get insta recruits this just makes it a little bit easier so when looking for insta recruits right you want to do this week one you can only land an insta recruit upon offering scholarship so you really only have one shot at it it's kind of like a dice roll in that sense so you want to make sure you set this up accordingly and put yourself in the best position to get these insta recruits so what you want to do is go by five star prospects and you want to sort by interest first when doing this, these are going to be the guys you can potentially get an insta recruit on. The guys in first are the ones you have a chance with. Anyone beyond that likely does not accept your insta recruit offer. Four star prospects, same thing. Once you do five stars, that was it. You want to sort by these here. And the thing with insta recruits, it honestly comes down to your program. If you're a lower tier program and you have a chance at insta recruit, I'm probably not scouting them. I'm probably just taking it. When you're a team like Georgia, a five star, four star program, you can go ahead and scout these players and see if you want to offer it to them in the first place. I would also throw some three stars on there only because it's not it's not bad to round out your class with some three stars. Uh, I, I would still do it. I would try to scout them, of course, first. These are the ones I would scout. The five star insta recruit I'm probably taking because it requires no points and you get them. So now we're at the board. Here's the method for how you do this. So first and foremost, the five stars, like I said, you don't need to scout them. If you're going to get an insta recruit scout, I'm probably taking it. It's going to improve your class, improve the optics and help you out with coaching XP, etc. The four stars you can scout and the three stars you can scout three stars being the most important because you don't want to load up a georgia or a five four star program recruiting class with three stars while it is nice to have some three star gems and i'll take those all day because three star gems so different than a normal because the three star gem has the potential to really grow into a great player so that's fine but you don't want to load up your recruiting class with that you could accidentally end up with a bunch of insta commits in the three star range and end up really hurting your class especially as a high tier program that can do quite a lot with what they have so what i recommend doing guys is go through this scout those three stars scout those four stars see the ones you absolutely want to offer in the case you don't get insta recruits you still could try to get the ones that you don't like such as the bad gems which is the red gem or the normal because they're still useful they're still going to make your class look great and being a top end recruiting class every single year is going to do a lot for your program now when sorting through these players that you've now have added the easiest way to tell if there's a chance at insta recruit is usually when you're three quarters or above fill to the top those are the guys that seem to be the most likely to insta recruit. I have seen it lower, but at a much lower rate. So this guy right here in the middle is unlikely to probably be an insta recruit. As you see, nothing there. Now you will get lucky sometimes and have a five star that's in Georgia, has the starting interest on you, and you automatically get a great opportunity at them. And as you see, another one right here, this is probably our best chance at an insta recruit. And that one right there was not one. This one right here is closer. This one's definitely closer. We keep on going down still nothing i do so that's one insta recruit right there people with the higher bars i said will be more likely so right here we see this one another scholarship nothing there let's keep it moving right here offer a scholarship nothing on that one although we're still pretty high keep in mind even if you don't get the insta recruit like right there we got one that's two right there in one class so we keep it moving and right there gets one more insta recruit so that's three so far and this is mainly because like i said these guys are the ones that you're first on being first on their board is so important for these insta recruits and without being first and near, I'd probably say again, three quarters or close to three quarters, you're not gonna get it. That is now four insta recruits. Keep going down right there. And like I said, with the gems, if you wanna be very specific and this is your dinosaur, like I said, you could remove the guys that aren't gems, guys that you absolutely don't want in your class, but anyone above a four star is probably worth offering a scholarship to in terms of in terms of getting the insta recruit, right? If not, you could always just, you could always remove them from your board, but trying to get that insta commit is so useful for hours. And I'll get into that shortly once we go through this whole list. So now you see we went through this a total is right here one two three four we have four total insta commits of this list at this point if you want to just focus strictly on insta commits you can start to remove some of these three stars that you don't care for if you were strictly going for them because you wanted the insta commit you can go ahead and start removing them and go back out there and start to refocus 
on some of the four stars that you may have seen that you didn't get to add to your board or some of the other three stars that there may have been. So the best benefit of getting these instant commits, and it's kind of why the first thing I do when recruiting is kind of go through and see my highest interest players is first and foremost, you have the best chance of winning a recruiting battle with those players. But if you do actually get an instant commit, it saves you so much time and greatly increases the ceiling of your recruiting class. Let's say you get four like Georgia just did in this instance. And by the way, any school can get an instant commit for the most part. There's obviously probably a higher probability at a higher school, but that's mainly because more schools are have you at their first spot. So you have more opportunities to do it versus a lower school. You may only get one shot at a player that has you in their first right now that also lower tier players. If you are a lower school and you have a one star or two star that has you first, those obviously can also instant commit to that aspect in that way. But the interest bars are just so much higher off rip with some of these higher schools. And that's probably why it's a higher percentage. But going back to my point, it increases your ceiling of uh, recruiting. So basically, let's say you wanted these four players and you had to compete with all these teams for them. You'd probably have to apply a hard sell and at the least 30 to 35 points on a player to kind of consistently grab them. So if over the course of four players, it's anywhere between 120 and 200 of your hours. So getting these instant recruit pretty much frees up 200 hours. You can now go all out in another position. So instant recruits greatly improve the ceiling of your class. Four, four stars right here. Starts you off right off rip as the top class with 78 points. And now you can start fresh just like everyone else with all your hours. It is a huge advantage to get insta commits. And like I said, it, it really is just based on the on the interest. That's what I would be looking at. Any player that's past half, really like two thirds, I'd say, but past half, right around the same, is where I'd be looking as an insta commit candidate. After which, if you didn't get the insta commit, like I said, I would just go and pull off anyone that's not worth still scouting, like those red gems, maybe a normal you didn't like the stats with. But the green gems, you can still go and start actually recruiting them with, the, with it being said that you still have the highest interest on them. Remember, this does vary from season to season. One season, you may have seven, five stars and have US first, and the opportunity for you to get instant commits are much higher. One season, you may have zero, five stars and have US first. You may have 44 stars. You may have two, four stars. It's always going to vary, especially depending on your program, your pipelines, and your school, and of course, the class, most importantly. So do keep that in mind that this does vary. I could make seven of these franchises, these sim dynasties, I should say and do this for you guys. And I could probably get one where there's five, five stars auto commits and a few where there's zero like this one, right? So keep that in mind too. This is mainly the method and explaining kind of how it works. So definitely keep that in mind. This does apply to every single class, every single year. Just know the results may vary depending. But again, landing these instant commits is so huge to how well your class can end up doing in one year. And don't, like I said, don't, don't be afraid of some three-star commits. If you find a green gem, get them off rip and commit, then you don't have to allocate some resource because some people may find them as well. And at which point you can now go through, reallocate your resources, rescout a different way. So that's totally up to you. I personally wouldn't waste too many scouting points on auto commit candidates. Like I told you earlier, it's good on the four stars and the three stars. It's good, especially on the three stars. Five stars, I wouldn't allocate it. And the four stars, I'd allocate it lightly because you might end up taking some of these guys off as well anyways. Now, keep in mind, although you may not have gotten all these Insta commits, honestly, you can kind of narrow it down to more Insta commits by looking at the recruiting bar. Honestly, when you're a pretty good program slash you have a large lead, even if you're a lower tier program, a large lead goes a long way in this game and it's very hard to overcome regardless. So this guy right here, I'd take off the board, keep on going down. This guy, I'd probably keep. Large lead, I'd keep. I'd keep this guy, et cetera, so on and so forth, right? This guy would stay on. This guy's a bit closer, but all these guys with large leads, I basically consider them insta recruits and the good method to go about doing here, especially in an online league, when you have that large lead and you offer them and go like hard sell first week, most of the league or the majority of them will probably back off that player because they see that you're going in on them and you already have a large lead and it's going to be a waste of time to them as the next two, three weeks go by, you can see that lead grow and you can kind of dial back on them and pretty much lock them in, which is almost like in my eyes, like it's that Insta recruit feature, right? Like you pretty much got them pretty easily without that many points. So you get these four guys, then you go on and you just narrow out this list of all the first interest guys and you keep these guys, right? These leads, these leads where you're almost like a quarter or so above them, keep all those guys on your board. And even if you scout them, and they're red gems or so, you're still getting an easy four star. That's the other thing. Only players I'm willing to fight for and go to bat for are players where the interest is somewhat close, where I can win it. And two, green gems, five stars, normal four stars, right? Normal four, normal five stars. Anything below a normal four star, I'm not fighting for. It really has to be a green gem four star or the five star, like I said. So with that being said, all these guys with huge interest, I'm mostly keeping them even if they're red gems, because you're going to get a huge and an insane class of high star prospects 
simply off doing that even beyond the insta commit if you use both these in tandem you could truly get a special class it's really the method i've been using all across my online leagues and my offline leagues just keep consistently landing high level classes is just doing this if you actually pay attention you focus you scout and you go through and combine the insta commits with the first interest big lead kind of setting you're going to just pull in over and over again easy prospects that require little to no work and then you go allocate the rest of your hours to the remaining guys that you want to fight for and if you can even hit on like 50 to 60 percent of those guys you're looking at a top tier class each and every time which goes such a long way like i said with coaching packages with just building a huge and prestigious program right as you see we advanced the week we've retained our large lead if not got an even larger lead on some of these guys at which point like i said i'd go through it and i'd start to apply a hard sell especially if you have the hours to spend and i'd start to apply if you have the hours to spend the send the house and just keep that lead as a good program you're not going to lose that lead and this pretty much ensures the free prospects as i mentioned you can go through if they're pretty tight and you're not so overly concerned about that prospect i would get off of it so like right here there's a tight one it's a red gem i would take him off keep him moving down this one would be an easy hard sell for me or send the house i should say big lead and then like i said once you get that lead on them and you keep building that lead they're going to back off and once they back off you're, it's just smooth sailing from there you can reallocate hours you can move it around this one's a pretty easy one with no offers this is one of the ones that i'm talking about where you kind of can just coast this one and not really worry about it with the schools that are involved in it so on and so forth you can maybe give it like a 25 but the ones where there's no offers you can kind of lay off of the ones with a few offers keep it pushing and the ones with a large lead they'll back off eventually but that's pretty much it for this video if this did help you figure out how to land insta commits and how this kind of worked please give me a thumbs up subscribe if you're new and of course comment down below if you have any questions regarding the whole insta commit process and yeah that's about it thank you so much for watching i'm out peace